Time for another board game review, and this time, fucking shit. Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Break in Alcatraz. This was sent to me by Play Monster, and is designed by Rebecca Blow, Nicholas Cravada, and David Yakos. You are the outside man breaking into Alcatraz to help a few of your buddies escape the inescapable prison. Throughout this collaborative experience, you must work together to follow a series of clues and solve puzzles to unfold multiple layers of the game and move deeper into the prison to find your friends. You'll encounter many obstacles and characters along the way. Good luck. Let me show you how to play. Well, kind of more how this game is formatted because I can't show you because it'll spoil it. Anyway, your typical review of these type of escape room games. Just the basics. All right, so this is a collaborative uh, escape room style game. You have a deck of cards, very much like Exit, but instead of letters, they are random symbols. You also start with a radio, um, tools, uh, and also a letter card. I'm not gonna read this whole thing, but it's basically setting up uh, uh, the game for you. You're basically trying to get your friend out of Alcatraz, and you're trying to do that by infiltrating it and then escaping. You also have seven solution sticks. We'll get into that in a second. Throughout the game, you will encounter two types of symbols. Um, card symbols and solution symbols. So if you look on the box here, um, by the way, the box shows you that this unfolds, so this isn't really a spoiler. It is a little weird. Well, I mean, you can hear stuff in there too. Um, it is a little weird that the um, contents tell you also, hey, there's a ball and chain in there. There's a raft puzzle. It does kind of seem like a little spoilery, but again, it's in the rule book, so I don't feel bad like telling you this. Um, usually, I don't know, they kind of try to not tell you some of this stuff, but whatever. But yeah, if you see this symbol, that means you draw that card from the deck. So if there's a boat, you draw that card, you have some more text. Uh, there are also hint cards, like this one, let's look at the coffee cup. These are optional, and you can use your radio to, you know, Wow, it's like Magic Eye, not Magic Eye, but whatever that thing was called. Try to get one of the alarm whistles. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing because you're going to play this, maybe. Uh, we'll see. There are also solution symbols. So how that works is basically in order to check your answer in this game, you'll notice that uh, this box, at least starting out, has slots. In this case, a, uh, a one slot here and a two slot here. Um, how it works is you are using... A solution stick so just a heads up like a solution symbol looks like this it has a box around it like an anchor so if I think the anchor is the correct uh, solution you look at them these are all double-sided so they all have different symbols I would grab the one with the anchor then I have to figure out there's always some kind of color and you have to figure out which slot so one or two uh, and then a yellow, red, or green, if this is in fact the right answer. Um, and how you check it is if you think it's like anchor yellow two, you stick the stick in and you see what symbol is in there. In this case, it's the upside down coffee cup. I'll just say that's not the right answer. Um, Cause usually if it's the wrong answer, you'll see it's like uh, one of the hint cards or something. But if it's a symbol that you haven't seen before, uh, then it is usually the right answer. I've never had one where it wasn't. Um, so yeah, that's the way to check your answer in this game is you get the right solutions. You're gonna need usually a three part answer, which is the symbol, the color, and the correct number. Now that's pretty much all I can tell you about the format. Uh, it's just deck of cards, solution six, and so a lot of it is just sort of searching the box. Like, oh, there's a, another card you can look at. And, uh, oh, you're trying to figure out what to do with these solution sim symbol boxes. And, you know, uh, eventually this unfolds. Again, I won't show you exactly, but the box sort of shows. Yeah, I mean, what the hell? I can show you the first stage. So. This is pretty early on anyway. Uh, if you do this, wow, there's, well, don't look too much in there. That's supposed to be closed, whatever. Anyway, you, you obviously know it's supposed to be open because there's like, it's clear there's shit in there, but yeah. And then there's more puzzles inside. That's pretty much the format of the game. 
Now let me just tell you how uh, my experience was. So uh, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This was bad. Uh, this is definitely the worst escape room style game I've played. But uh, I guess I'll go into what I kind of liked. Uh, I think the most ambitious aspect of it, and you know, I, it's on the back of the box, so I, I, I think it's fine to share this, is that it unfolds into that sort of 3D thing and it sort of opens up as it goes. That's kind of cool. The one moment I felt like a glimmer of like, this is kind of neat, is involves that 3D space, you know? But let's talk about what doesn't work, which is pretty much everything else. Those solution sticks I showed you are an absolute hassle because one, they're double-sided, they got tiny little symbols, there are like so many of them, and they're all double-sided, so it's like, okay, where's the, where's the thing? It can be very tedious trying to find the right one. This is definitely inspired by the Exit games, which I have uh, reviewed before. Uh, and the Exit games use a wheel where you can very clearly just map, do the symbol and do, 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 and see if the symbol is right. This is just a shitty version of that. Um, like, I know they couldn't just copy it, but this is still bad. It's just a dumb version of it. Another thing that they take from the Exit games is you know, if you find symbols, you draw those cards. The rule book implies that you'll find these symbols with yellow circles around them because, you know, when you're first starting, you see, oh, there's a yellow circle, yellow circle. Later on, the game breaks those rules and expects you to just know that something is supposed to be one of the symbols. When the only way you would know that is if you went through every single card in the deck in advance, which is ridiculous. Like, there's one solution in particular that made us so mad because it was like this how are we supposed to know that one this was supposed to be anything and two in these games you're usually not supposed to look at what's in the deck so the way only way for us to have known that it was like the clue to get, draw the card is if we like looked through all of them and knew all of them by heart ridiculous exit also has a very clear interface very clean it has very, very identifiable shapes. It's usually like shapes and locks and stuff. And it clearly tells you draw these letter cards from an alphabetical deck. This is again, just the shitty version of that. Some of the puzzles in this game also require you to look back at information you had from a previous puzzle. In most escape rooms and an exit, once you've completed a puzzle, you can basically move on. You can discard those items to the side because you don't need them anymore. That way you can kind of cleanly organize, okay, this is stuff that we've used, we don't need it. Uh, anything that we do need would be clearly with us. Not in this game. There's like at least one time where it's like, oh wait, you need that one card. And you have to look through all these cards that all look the same. And since you, after, and once it like sort of gives you that standard, you think, okay, well, I guess I need to save all the cards just in case a puzzle requires one. And then it's just a big cluttered mess. It's a disaster. Like... Again, exit games usually once once cards that are like done, you just sort of put to the side, and you have this nice clean space of these are the ones we're working on now. But this game goes well. You might need a card from before, and it doesn't help that they all look the same because they're all either walls of text or the stupid hint cards with the red stuff. It it's a mess. Now all of this would be tolerable if the puzzles were fun, but they're mostly not. They are either extremely obtuse or tedious, or both. I can give an escape room game some slack if there's at least one puzzle, just one puzzle that makes me go, oh, that's really clever, oh, that's great. I never felt that once during this game. In fact, whenever the game asks me to draw more cards, which by the way, the narrative of this game is constantly faking you on it. Okay, we're done, just kidding. Here's three more boring puzzles. And it's just like, I want, you know, if I'm actively dreading puzzles, that's not how I should be feeling during a puzzle game. I should be like, okay, let's see what's what's next. Now, we're not done yet. Oh, and these suck. The average puzzle in this game has the vibe of a stereotypical annoying math problem like, if so-and-so walks this distance from here, and so this one walks here, but this bird is flying every hour here, and blah, 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 just these annoying unfun logic puzzles that sometimes require you like way too much busy work other puzzles are just straight up unclear either in direction or execution even after you know the answer there's at least one instance where there's a typo that has the wrong answer that is unacceptable unacceptable 
even the 3D unfolding thing, which is the only maybe good thing about this, is a hassle because sometimes you are not sure how to unfold it and it feels like you're breaking the thing. It doesn't give you super clear instructions all the time. And also good luck trying to put it back together because you're not gonna be able to do it right. That and some of the puzzles definitely require you to write stuff on them if you want to stand a chance at solving them. So this is not a game you can even give away afterwards, which I wouldn't mind. Like with exit games, they're a one-time play pretty much, but I like those games. This is not even fun. And then I can't give it to someone else afterward as like, hey, you can try. Like. It's basically a one and done. Also, the writing is extremely bland. Uh, even on an Exit's games, writing is at least a little charming. This is devoid of any charm whatsoever. Do not get this game. It is tedious, irritating, unrewarding. Anything it tries to do well, other escape games have done better. This is definitely the worst one I have played in this genre.